Shalom and welcome to Tov, the Jewish news channel. We have with us today Yoni Ben Menachem, who is an expert on Arab affairs and Middle Eastern affairs in general. And Shalom. Shalom Yoni, I'd like you? to ask you, I'd like to ask you today about what's happening up north. Uh, we've heard that the American envoy, special envoy Amos Hochstein has arrived and is in Lebanon for talks, trying to broker some kind of a peace deal or arrangement between Israel and Lebanon. Is that feasible? Does it even make sense? Well, uh, as you know, and, uh, we see every day this uh, war of attrition that uh, Hezbollah uh, is conducting against Israel, and uh, we have uh, uh, this war going on since the, uh, October the uh, 7th. And it continues, uh, and the Americans uh, are very worried uh, about uh, what is happening in the northern border. Uh, as you know, uh, uh, about 60, 70,000 Israelis had to leave their homes on the border with Lebanon because uh, they are afraid uh, that uh, there will be a Hezbollah attack uh, on, their, on their houses, like uh, what happened in uh, in the Jewish settlements uh, around uh, Gaza. Uh, and uh, this, these Israelis cannot go back home. And the, the war continues uh, and uh, it's escalating. And uh, President Biden is very afraid that this might lead in the, eventually to a regional war, something that he doesn't want in, this, uh, uh, in the coming year because of the uh, presidential elections. So the Americans now are trying to mediate between Israel and Hezbollah. So they uh, sent uh, Amos Ochstein, uh, and he's coming, uh, according to different reports, he's carrying uh, some sort of proposal uh, to solve the uh, uh, points of dispute between Israel and Lebanon concerning the border uh, between them and also uh, concerning the uh, Rajar village problem. Some of uh, the uh, Lebanese are saying, or Hezbollah is saying, that uh, this part of uh, of the village of Rajar, which is under Israeli control, should be under uh, Lebanese control and not uh, Israeli control. In any case, uh, Amos Ochsten will conduct talks with uh, uh, the leaders in Lebanon. Of course, uh, they will talk to Hezbollah. Uh, and uh, he's not uh, uh, dealing directly with Hezbollah, and then uh, uh, afterwards they will come to Israel and, and to see what Israelis are saying. Uh, personally, I don't believe that uh, they will be able to find a, a diplomatic solution to uh, the war which is going on in South Lebanon. Why not? Why, Why not? That? Because... Uh, because uh, what is happening now uh, in South Lebanon, the attacks of Hezbollah, uh, it's not connected to do the border dispute between Israel and Lebanon. This is all orchestrated uh, by Iran, uh, which is the head of the axis of evil. And this is part of the campaign against Israel that we see all over the Middle East, starting from Gaza and uh, the Houthis in Yemen, and Hezbollah in Lebanon, and the uh, pro-militia, pro-Iranian militias in uh, Iraq and Syria. Everybody is shooting rockets at Israel, uh, and this is part of a, a big campaign conducted by Iran. And uh, I don't think that the border issues between Israel and Lebanon are now the case. The problem is the uh, uh, war of attrition that Iran is leading against Israel. So doesn't Amos Hochstein know all of these things? I mean, he's pretty well versed in what's happening. He's a former Israeli himself. He knows a lot of people here. He brokered the famous gas deal in the very short uh, prime ministerial term of Yair Lapid, which was supposed to bring us peace and harmony with Lebanon forever. Um, what's the point? Of course. Of course he knows the reality in the Middle East, of course he knows, but uh, he is an envoy, as you said, of uh, President Biden, and he has to carry out uh, the orders of the American administration. He's doing his best, of course, but and the Americans are trying. They know that the problem is Iran, 
the bigger problem is that Biden doesn't want to confront Iran in the year of elections. Uh, so uh, the, we have to look at the bigger picture. He doesn't want to confront Iran uh, in the year of the, the presidential elections. Uh, he doesn't want uh, an escalation that will lead to a regional war in the Middle East, because uh, this is something that the, the United States doesn't want. And he wants eventually to reach some sort of agreement with Iran on the nuclear uh, issue. Uh, and uh, he knows that uh, if there will be an escalation now, uh, th this will also torpedo a future uh, agreement between uh, the superpowers and Iran about the nuclear issue. So uh, he's trying to mediate, uh, but eventually I think uh, this all the American efforts will fail. And uh, I think that Israel will have no choice but uh, uh, to push Hezbollah away from the border by a military force. So what's happening inside Lebanon itself? I mean, Hochstein is talking to the Lebanese government, which basically is a kind of a puppet government. Is Hezbollah really in charge in Lebanon? Uh, of course, Hezbollah is the most powerful uh, uh, political and military power in Lebanon. There's no president. Uh, there isn't, there's no consensus, you know, in order to, to elect a president, you need a, an agreement between all the factions, and they, they cannot reach an agreement because Hezbollah wants to nominate uh, one of its uh, supporters. So there's no president. The, the prime minister, Mikati, the Jim Mikati, is a temporary one. And uh, actually, the whole uh, political echelon in Lebanon is... Uh, is not functioning. But even if they would function, the one who is calling the shots is Hezbollah. And they cannot do anything without the approval of Hezbollah. So uh, Hezbollah means Iran. So the key is in the hands of Hezbollah in Iran. So let's say for a moment that Israel agreed to move the border in Raja into Lebanon. In other words, move Raja into Lebanon, the part that's in Israel. Would that change anything in your mind? It will be an Israeli surrender, but it will not change the reality on the ground because, as I told you, uh, uh, what is happening is it, it doesn't have a direct contact to disputes uh, to the disputes about the borderline in between Israel and Lebanon. What is happening is something bigger, which is part of the war of attrition that Iran decided to launch on Israel since October the 7th. So I don't think there is any chance for uh, uh, solving this problem without using a military force uh, and attacking Hezbollah strongly and uh, in the south of Lebanon and actually forcing it to withdraw its forces, the Radwan forces away from the border uh, uh, to Israel uh, and, and implement the uh, UN Resolution 1701, which uh, says that Hezbollah cannot go down to the border with Israel. And how much effect does what's happening in Gaza have on Hezbollah in the north? Uh, Hezbollah claims that they are uh, attacking Israel now in order to uh, help uh, Hamas in Gaza and uh, that we, they will not so, uh, stop the fighting unless there is a complete ceasefire in Gaza and the uh, uh, full Israeli withdrawal of the IDF from uh, uh, Gaza to the international border. Actually, they are all coordinated, uh, Hamas and Hezbollah are coordinated with Iran, and this is the same uh, uh, pressure that they are trying to put on Israel to stop the war, uh, admit to its defeat, and, uh, and withdraw from Gaza completely. So uh, can I ask you a question about uh, the hostage situation in Gaza? Uh, what do you think of the chances are, and is it a good idea for Israel to enter in some kind of cease, temporary ceasefire to uh, get our hostages back? We have to do everything in order to release our hostages uh, that are held by Hamas. Uh, uh, everything but stopping the war. We can agree for to a ceasefire uh, in return for the release of more hostages, uh, and uh, we can make all sorts of deals with Hamas uh, indirectly, of course, uh, uh, for humanitarian relief and so on, like we did uh, uh, 
a few weeks ago, but eventually we have to understand that Hamas is not going to release all the hostages, even if we agree to all its terms, because they are using the Israeli hostages as a, their insurance. Uh, and they know that the minute uh, they release all of the hostages, uh, then Israel will uh, destroy them completely. So they, they want to keep at least some of the hostages as a, a human shield, as an insurance policy that Israel will not eliminate Hamas. Wow. So you're saying that you think that possibly maybe the family that the Bibas family that we have lost contact with, we know nothing about, they may be actually the ones protecting Sinwar and his, and, and Def and people like that? Theoretically, it's possible because we know from uh, intelligence reports that uh, uh, Sinwar and the military leadership of Hamas, Hamas, which is hiding in the tunnels, are surrounding themselves with a belt of at least a few dozens of the hostages uh, this is as a protection in case the IDF will try to, to kill them and uh, they, they are holding them as a bargaining card uh, in case the, the IDF will discover where they are hiding and try to kill them. So what, what's the way out of that situation? That sounds like a lose-lose situation any, in any case. Even if we knew exactly, maybe we do know where, where Sinwar is, how, how are we ever going to get to him? I'm not going to go into this uh, specifics because this is not uh, the censorship does not allow to discuss it on the media. I think that uh, we know a lot more than what is said in the media. I just I uh, will so. tell you that. <laughs> I hope so. If, yes, we do. We, we do. We do know a lot more than is uh, published in the media. But uh, I, I, there is not. We, we are still fighting. We are, we, we are trying to make another uh, prisoner exchange deal with Hamas to release more of the hostages. But uh, in the end, we will, we will arrive to the crucial point and we'll have to decide what we are doing uh, in uh, this uh, possible scenario that uh, Ikhya Sinwar is protecting himself personally with a few hostages. The, the cabinet will have to decide what to do. Okay, thank you very much, Yoni Ben Menachem. We can only be grateful that we're not the ones that have to make that decision. And oh, shalom to our viewers. And thank you to our viewers. And don't forget to subscribe to all our channels on YouTube, Instagram, WhatsApp, and so on.